Hello, my name is Matt. Welcome to Unbearable 73. In this video, I share my thoughts on a circumstance when you should know not to pay attention to place much value on a person's opinion. This is not the only circumstance, but just strong criteria to help you filter out what some people are saying, given how many people are saying how many things, how much information is just throwing itself at us nowadays. Um, and if this is just about the contents of the review that inspired this video, I provide a link to the archive version. But it's not about the contents of the review. I'm going to make my point. So uh, let me call up an, uh, 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 the article that sort of inspired this now. So there's a link to this below. So you can read this uh, Spencer Bakuli's summary of the issues and whatnot. <coughs> Excuse me. So I was watching a quarter interview the other day. That's when I first heard about this. And there was a new Twitter controversy that he hadn't really he hadn't even heard of for a day or two. But I guess one of his followers brought to his attention. And there's always a attempt to cancel someone who had wrong think or wrong speak. Happens probably a hundred times a day on Twitter with various uh, blue checkmark brigade subgroups and whatever. And it was over the new of the new Pixar movie, Turning Red, which just came out, I think, yesterday or today. Now, this video is not about the movie Turning Red. I don't have an opinion on it. Um, very little Pixar has done has ever interested me. It's just I don't like their style of animation. Not that the stories haven't been good or bad. It's just... Uh, you know, there's been some cool songs and some cool clips out of it, but just the style of animation is not something I want to sit there and watch for two hours. You know, that's my personal opinion. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. So, in, in the cinema article that I just brought up, uh, there just and the issue being mentioned, there was a uh, not the cinema, excuse me, in the bounding into comics article and the quartering video, they're talking about uh, another site called Cineblend, which among other things does movie reviews. And uh, Sean O'Connell, he's the managing editor there, I believe, and he posted a review of the movie. Which is that standard, uh, and people post reviews and whatnot. And the blue check mark brigade began a firestorm of CRT-based criticism of, of this writer and the review of the writer, ignoring the content of the review, which, from uh, uh, reading through it, was well written, uh, because the writer shared his personal opinion that the film was not meant for him. I.e., he was not the target audience for the film. So, to give a summary, to give a summary of events. Sean O'Connell was then accused of being an istinophobe. Uh, Cinema and Ben and Denis, they took their review down. They stated that they had, that, that they had failed to properly edit this review and that it should never have gone up. Um, so let's look, look what they actually said there. And I believe that will show up here. Uh, do I have it? Uh, oh, that's in the article. Uh, I'll scroll down the article so you can see it. So Cineblend... Cineblend, Cineblend. I should have brought this, this uh, tweet up for you guys. Yeah. So Cineblend. We f they said they failed a proper editor review and it never should have gone up. We want to publish it and assign someone else, blah, blah, blah. And you can read that. Um, they reassign you, they, they're assigning you to someone else. Um, and I bet this person will be the subject of a deep market analysis uh, of who the blue, blue check mark will will least complain about. I bet this view will also be utterly bland and a complete and a complete ass kicking, ass kissing of this of the film, regardless of the qual of the quality of the film. And they say they had new edit at, uh, levels of editorial oversight. Mm -hmm. That was enough for the blue check mark brigade. Uh, calls him out for Sean O'Connell be fired because he's an istinophobe. Uh, that that's what these two tweets uh, are examples of. Here's two members of the check mark brigade just making comments attacking his person and not the content of what he said. Mm -hmm. I have no problem if they're going after the content of the review and being critical there or disagreeing with his opinion that it wasn't meant for him. I would do have a hot, but they're attacking him, not his opinion or the content. <clears throat> you know, I'll leave those up for you guys to look at while I'm talking here. So, and then Sean, uh, Sean O'Connell then issued an apology, which I'll, which I, you know, let me make sure you guys can see all this. There we go. So oh, that does show a kind of apology, and that's that's what got me uh, the gist of what my my point here is. So the quartering video, which I linked to in my summary, you can go watch that. He can give you a whole summary of uh, the actual review in the Blue Checkmark Brigade. I am going. What I am talking about is his response and what that tells us, and what we should learn from his response and and responses like this in general. Okay. So if someone, in this case, Sean O'Connell, basically states that, that he had decided his opinion needs to be subject to the opinion of others rather than, than what the opinion is about, that person is basically telling you that their opinion is virtually worthless. 
It's important to understand that the presentation of, a, of any information is an opinion. For example, if Nature, which is a scientific journal for those who don't know, uh, publishes a paper on the detection of gravitational waves, which is uh, an, uh, which would be proof of another prediction made by Einstein's general relativity model, that is Nature's opinion that the paper should be read by the audience. That is zero bearing on the validity of the information inside. Since this scientific paper comes under the topic of knowledge, Whereas, the, whereas opinion is a form of belief. So they believe that this information should be shared, but the information being shared could in fact be knowledge that could be vetted by third-party sources and whatnot. Okay? And more on that below. So another example, uh, Jimmy Dore, who's a, who's a very popular uh, left-leaning podcaster, and uh, everyone should be listening to him, regardless of your, your viewpoint, because he's fair to both sides, and yeah, he has opinions you may disagree with, but he's not going to attack you, the person. He's going to attack. He's going to try to attack the position or try to persuade you. You know, um, and he sometimes has some good jokes. So, if you release a video where he advocates for change in the healthcare system, that's his opinion that it should be changed and that his that the content of that video should be shared. Okay, that has no bearing on the information itself in the sense of the content of it. Uh, the health, that his belief might be that health is a fundamental right and compared to the, similar to the right to bear arms or the right to free speech and whatnot. Okay. His opinion is that information should be given to others. It doesn't validate or invalidate the information he's sharing. It's, it's there's a separate thing in and of itself. Uh, the information he, uh, he is sharing in, it, in that case what might be subjective, which is why I gave this particular example, as opposed to objective, which is where I give the general relativity and gravitational wave example. So basic epistemology tells us there are two forms of truth. There's knowledge and there's belief. Knowledge is something proven to be true by an established and in, uh, independently reproducible process. Belief is simply true because one holds to be true, i.e. they have faith in it. One can have belief that knowledge can be spread, and one can have knowledge that a belief is a good or bad thing. But the two cannot be connected directly, meaning if you believe something, it has no bearing on if you know something. If you know something, it has no bearing on if you believe something. Okay, that's the point of the difference between the two. Just bear that in mind. So back to to content. Cinnabon's publication of the review is a statement of their collective belief that information presented in it is something that should have been shared. So Cinnabon said, "This is an article written by one of our people, and we want to share this. We we believe we hold the point true. Where any sort of empirical proof, we believe that this this the con this information is something we should get out to the, our audience. We should publish it." Okay? Cinnabon's withdrawal from publication is a, is a statement that collective belief that the information printed should be hidden away. So by withdrawing from publication, they're saying that our belief, previous belief was wrong, and now we believe this information should not be shared, it should be uh, hidden away. But that, again, has no bearing on the content of the information. It's their, pers their group belief, so to speak, that it should be shared or not shared. Now, Sean O'Connell... His initial creation of the view is his belief that his thoughts on the movie are worthwhile in terms of being gathered together, being organized, being shared, maybe evaluated others in their evaluation of the topic of the review. So, uh, so Sean O'Connell's belief is that he should, he's putting together all what I just said to make his review, and that the information he presents in that view, which will include some of his personal beliefs and some knowledge, i.e. facts he gathers from sources, like maybe the, the, how much money the movie's project to make, or who, who, who did the animation, and so on and so forth. Uh, um, that, that's all stuff in the information presented, okay? He believed that that his summary of that his review may be available to to people to read in one place. So he he creates it and he puts it out there. Sean O'Connell's apology. This is we're getting to the critical point. Is a statement of his belief that his original opinion was flawed, not based on any objective analysis of it. But I say, for example, if someone shouts a fire in a crowded theater and it's not a fire, that may be an opinion and we can objectively say, well, that was a bad idea. The courts have come down pretty clearly on that. You can't shout fire in a crowded theater unless there's a fire. Uh, you know, that free speech won't protect you in that case. And we could objectively say, well, I bet, uh, riots, damaging people, and whatever. He's not saying that some objective analysis changed his opinion. He's saying that his other people's beliefs changed his belief, okay, with that statement on the screen. Cognitively, there's nothing wrong with this in and of itself. Um, humans were social animals, genetically speaking, like our primate cousins, you know, chimps, gorillas, bonobos, and whatever. Uh, you'd be surprised how similarly human beings behave to chimps and bonobos. It's like 90 plus percent of behaviors that they do, we do, and so forth. You know? mm -hmm. 
And we all, the same one, want, want to be in harmony with some other groups, parts of the herd, to use a Nietzschean term. You know, we have our families and our social groups and our, our, you know, online groups and our gaming groups and whatever. But we want to be part of these groups because it, it's a bonding experience and it makes us feel better and safer. Right? Positive reinforcement, basically. And the negative reinforcement is being punished and pushed out of that, which is what the blue check marker is attempting to do to him or did to him and attempts to others. So, however, Sean's original opinion, the review, contained one of the things, an analysis of the movie turning red. Those contents are information. The information, as I mentioned before, can be objective or subjective, knowledge or, or belief, or a combination thereof. And it doesn't, just because it's presented to you as information, does not mean it's correct. Um, that's presenting you, when you're evaluating something, when you receive information, you have to evaluate whether it's true or not. That doesn't mean that you're the sole arbiter of truth. Okay? That's a more complicated subject. When nature publishes general relativity, uh, uh, the gravitational wave, this is a few years ago that they detected gravitational waves, just proved the prediction of general relativity. Nature's not saying that they're the arbiter of this is true or not. They're not saying that you, by reading this, and knowing is the arbiter of truth. They're saying that you are evaluating this, that uh, objective analysis has confirmed this, but in your analysis of this, you can still find flaws in it. And if you can objectively counter those flaws, which has happened, there have been cases where scientific papers that seemed 100% true have been published over the hundreds of years we've been doing this, and someone comes out of the blue, reads it in the journal, and says, wait, this is clearly wrong, and comes up with some mathematical ver verification, and the whole years of some time work, work goes down the drain because some other scientist or even some layperson who happened to be really good at, at math or whatever finds a big flaw in, in, in the argument. You know? So now the value of the information is therefore subject to the to the to the to that of the to the I guess you would say subject to the presenting person or organization. Okay, and by value I mean not so much is the information worth money. But is it worth your time? Okay. Uh, the information is subject to the intent and formation of its presentation. I'll, I'll be, try to break this down a little. So if something is in the block of information, it is subject to the form of presentation. It's off, and if you want a way to think of this visibly, um, watching the movie Star Wars is much more immersive and satisfying than having your friend tell you a 10-minute summary of Star Wars. You know, or any other movie you like, or book you read, or whatever. You know. So the value of that information, as I just said, is, there, is therefore subject to the presenting person or organization. And as I said, I want to get it on this point. I'm not talking about how much you pay for it. Uh, I'm talking about how you budget your time. In, in as I mentioned, there's a metric crap ton of information coming at us from all sources, from friends, from social media, from emails, from work. Uh, and you as an individual have to, take the, have to look at as much as you can to make your, just your rational decisions to deal with stuff. Okay? So, so one has to weigh Sean O'Connell's decision to present that information, his format and so on, in, in the determination of whether or not that observ his observations that are in that, that put that information together are even worth uh, reading, so to speak. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And and again, his. Uh, I need to make this clear. I'm sorry if I'm sounding like I'm hawking on a point, uh, beating a dead horse. The presentation of the information has nothing to do with the validity of the information itself, but it does bear on whether or not you should take the time to listen to that presentation at all. And that is where I'm going with this. There are likely going to be hundreds of thousands of reviews of the movie Turning Red. You, you could spend, if you just want to know every single possible thing about Turning Red, you could spend the next 16 years reading YouTube and internet reviews and newspaper reviews of the movie Turning Red. There are, there's billions of people on the internet, and I, I would speculate that depending on what you qualify as a review, more than a million of them are going to publish something that could be identified as a review. So, how do you filter? Okay, so here's where I'm going. Why should you or I place any time on Sean's 
review, if he himself lowers the value of the information, not based on responses to the information, but rather responses of who presented it. If he if he if he's saying my information is my my review is in and of itself not containing something you should read because of me, rather than because of something in it, he's saying literally, don't read my review. So Sean, by issuing this apology, again, not for what's in it, is basically saying, uh, don't read my review. He's willing to alter the contents, which include deleting it, based on the external pressures of on his identity and his freedom of expression, not based on what he actually said. Um, I mean, he's telling us his opinion is worthless. And this is what it comes down to, the topic of the video. Thanks, Sean, for letting us know this is the case. We now know to avoid your reviews because you think your your opinion is worthless. If you think your opinion is worthless, well, why should I take the time to, to ever read or watch it again? You know, I, I'm, uh, we don't have an infinite amount of time to, to spend deciding to, to analyze if we want to watch this movie uh, or not, or any movie. Why should we now know to know that Sean O'Connell is someone we should never ever uh, read or read or review about a movie again because he says his information presented is worthless, whether it's true or not. The information is all that he says it's worthless. So this video in my, is my opinion that my viewpoint on this issue is something that should be shared and may help others determine whether or not any, to read, read any more of Sean reviews and how in some, some circumstances to evaluate other presenters' information. Again, my opinion. Okay, and I'm not telling you my opinion. My 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 video is an opinion. I'm, I'm sharing it. I'm, I believe it will be helpful to you. And the content of it is part opinion and part fact. I presented some facts about the nature of knowledge and truth from epistemology and some facts about what happened. And I formulated my opinion and thoughts on that and presented it to you. And I, and I, I place value. I think you listening to what I said could it could be of value to you. Okay, I, I wouldn't even post this if I didn't think it would be of value to you in some capacity. Okay? Never tolerate other people or organizations filtering information from you. Instead, learn to budget your evaluation time more logically and let everyone have their say. We're not alone in the world. We're not infallible. If we make a mistake, there are enough billions out there to catch it before it gets too big. I'm Matt. This has been on Bearable 73. Like if you hit, if you like it, dislike if you if you dislike it. Subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Have a nice day, and I am out of here.